On the air everywhere, this is New England Broadcasting. Sweet Tuesday morning, came on your smile. Tuesday. Good afternoon, good evening, good night. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Thank you very much. Hold on tight, things can get a bit weird. If you like that sort of thing. Welcome to the program. It indeed is the Ron Van Dam Show. Guess which one I am? No. No. Uh. Hey, this is exciting. We're going to spend a half an hour of a Tuesday together. Have you been looking forward to this as much as I have not? <laughs> Oh, you're looking good today. What did you brush your hair? Did you brush your teeth? Wow, you're smelling good too. What is that? Did you shower? I don't understand why people take baths. That never, I, I never could figure out why someone would take a bath. Why you would light candles and then lie in your own uh, dirty skin water? I, I don't, I don't. I don't get it. I just... Sorry. Although I do revere the bathroom, it's one of the few places we can go in life where people just aren't going to bother you for an extended period of time. It's not so bad. Uh, (laughs) I don't remember when I was a child to get away from everything. I would just sit on the toilet in the bathroom with the door closed and they'd be knocking at the door. Hey, hey, what are you doing in there? And I wouldn't answer like I had passed out or something. And uh, the paramedics would come, and, but everything was fine. <music> oh, the sanctity of the bathroom. It's the most important room in the house. Some people say it's the kitchen. If you have to go to the bathroom, the kitchen ain't that important. <music> go to a public restroom in the handicap stall that sucker is big it's got to fit a wheelchair and all that but that's a good space you know you got a toilet do you ever sit on the toilet in a handicapped uh <laughs> this is going nowhere do you ever sit on the toilet in a uh, handicapped uh, public restroom and uh, sit there and look around and go you know i could live in here i'm gonna put the dishwasher over there put the sink over there tv would go on the wall over here Am I the only one that does that? Apparently I am. Oh, Lord. This is, uh, this is killing me, this summer thing. I just, I look at the calendar every day. When is this going to be over? I used to look forward to the summer. I used to romp and play. I mean, I know what playing is. Romping, I'm not sure what that is. I don't know. The kids romp, but I I don't know. I, I don't, no one uses that verb anymore because they don't know what it means. It just, it couples with romp and play, but just to romp, I'm not sure about that. I don't think that's healthy. I think uh, romping by itself can cause uh, great bodily harm. 
So I, you know, I, I'm not young enough to go romp and play in the in the summer fun. Uh, the summer heat thing is absolutely getting absurd. I don't understand what's going on. Have we somehow become closer to the sun? Is that what happened, unbeknownst to us? How would you know if you're closer to the sun? I mean, no one has measuring tape like that. How do you measure that? Uh, I don't I don't know. I, do you get a surveying company to go out? I, I don't know. I don't know how you do that. We could be closer to the sun. It seems like the summers are more extreme. I don't know. I don't know. I can't explain it. I'm not a scientist. Thank God I'm not a scientist. I'd be obsessed with that stuff. Crazy stuff, man. Uh, I have a very interesting guest today. I'm going to make you a bit uncomfortable, and I don't believe the children should be in the room at all, any, ever, but certainly during today's program. So I'm going to give you a moment to get the kids out of the room. Do you need music to do that? No? Okay, just get them out of the room. Uh, well, all right. I'll give you a little backup music uh, while you can get them out of the room. No, I won't. Yes, I will. No, I won't. Okay. Uh, my guest today is going to talk about condoms. Oh, my God, Ron. You're going to talk about ketchup and mustard? No, that's condiments. I thought condiments were little candies that you put inside the condom. All right, that's disgusting, and I and that's just absurd. I mean, as far as the word construction is concerned, it could be, but it's not. Condoms. Uh, you know, there comes a point in life where uh, you don't need those suckers anymore. You're just like beyond it. You can't have children anymore anyway. And uh, I think that should be a party. Screw the birthday parties. I don't have to, uh, I can't have children anymore. Yay! I think you're only excited about that if you've already had children. By the way, let's talk about that for just a second. Not for long, though, because I'm going to probably insult a lot of people. When I meet somebody and uh, we're talking and they say, uh, and somehow it comes up in conversation that they have like four children or five children, my response to them is, why? Why would you do something like that? It's socially irresponsible to have more children, more than duplicating your lives. You know, a couple has has a baby. You have two people. You have two little children. That's replacing the two of you. Done. Done. There's no argument to that. But why do you have? Why did you have five children, or even four, or even three? Sometimes the response to why did you have three children is, well, in case we lose one, we still have two. What? What? Uh, and then the other response is, uh, well, I came from a large family. And and then I, I, I say, and, and, is there more to that sentence? Or <laughs> what does it have to do with anything? Because you came from a large family, and what? Yeah, so we had to fight for our food. Oh, fun. Uh, good fun. Good times. Good times. We, uh, we had to vie for attention from our parents. Oh, Oh, good. Yeah, um, our parents loved loved us all equally, all five of us. Bullshit. They did not. They had favorites. You can't have five things and then love all of them equally. You can't do it. Oh, Ron, with children, yes, you can. All right, fine, whatever. Whatever your belief system may be. I, I just, I don't understand couples that do more have more children than replacing themselves i I just uh, i don't i don't i don't just don't get it but that's me i i came from a family of two so um you know that's how i'm comfortable i think that's proper i think that's the way it should be i think in the bible i think it's leviticus chapter two paragraph seven the third word in it says just two it says just two anyway um I know China had a law like you can't have that many children. I I don't I don't think that's proper to do, but at the same time, not a bad idea. Could never do that in this country because this used to be a democracy. <laughs> you see how I snuck that in cuz things are pretty crappy right now. Anyway, uh so we're going to talk about condoms today. I'm glad the kids have left the room. We're going to talk about condoms today. Because uh if you can have children, 
then uh, condoms are the way to go. They are the uh, wave of the future. <laughs> no, they're not. Uh, did you know that condoms are not just condoms anymore? They come in all different shapes and sizes. Uh, my response is, I don't care what shape or size they come in. Let's just make sure that they're solid. That's all I'm talking about, baby. Yeah, someone says, oh, I'm pregnant. Didn't you use a condom? Yeah, we did. Oh, okay. Who are we going to sue? Can you guess the condom company, perhaps? I don't know. It's a manufacturing default. Anyway, um, yeah, condoms. They, now they they're have designer condoms. And uh, a gentleman who has uh, had a company for quite some time, I understand, um, is uh, going to speak to us. Uh, he has a condom company. Uh, whoa. <laughs> okay. So that's coming up uh, pretty soon here in the program. You don't want to miss that. That's for damn sure. I'm pretty sure you don't want to miss that one. You know what a phrase I love is when a couple gets together, you know, the woman gets pregnant, and uh, she walks around and she says, uh, speaking about her and her husband, hopefully they're married, uh, she says, yes, we're pregnant. Uh, Excuse me? No, you're pregnant. Your husband is not pregnant. That can't be. Unless he's wearing one of those uh, disposable uteruses, um, which I, they probably sell at CVS. I don't know. But no, the guy can't. The guy can't be pregnant. Uh, so stop saying that. We're we're pregnant. Oh, you are, sir. You, Bob, you're pregnant too. No, 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 no. It's a phrase. She's pregnant, so we're both pregnant because we're both complicit in this. Uh, in this situation. Yeah, but Bob, you're not pregnant. I got to tell you, man. I mean, it's, it's physically kind of impossible. Although these days you never know. Ah. But every time I hear that phrase, I just laugh at them. I go, oh, okay, you're both pregnant. Yeah, right. Okay, sure. Yeah, right. Fine. Yeah, whatever. 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 You can say we're both expecting a child. Well, I'm expecting a child, too. I mean, yeah, Halloween, they come to my door. Uh, I'm expecting them to show up. Yeah, that's why I buy all that candy. By the way, uh, it's not Halloween or anything like that, but I'm wasting a lot of money on that stupid candy. I always assume there's going to be hundreds of kids coming to my door, and there's usually just like three. I don't think kids anymore want candy. That or it's too dangerous. Yeah, I want to put a costume on, walk around, knock on strangers' doors, and uh, I'll see you in a couple hours. You know, I don't think it was ever safe to trick or treat. And I know parents, you know, they escort their children around when they're younger, but then they get older and it's like, hey, hi, hi, I'm dressed as a sexy nurse. Can I have some candy? Well, sure. Come on in the house into my basement. That's where I keep the candy. That's not a good idea. Not a great idea. I don't know who came up with this Halloween thing. I don't think it was a modern day concept. I think it probably worked back in the days of yore. And I don't know what your days were. I don't know what that means. The days of yore. I think it's Y-O-R-E. I don't know where that was. I think things were a little different. It's like the Constitution of the United States. Not the boat, but the the document. They put that together at a time where there was nothing. There there was nothing. (laughs) If you wanted wanted to to have a right to to, to, uh, own a gun, you, you had a gun and a couple of bullets, and if you fired a shot, it took 10 minutes to reload. That was under the auspices of that rule, that little clause. But we still hold it to be true. No, you don't hold it to be true because it's not true. That was at a different time, hundreds of years ago, very, very different. The Constitution is what we call a little outdated. It's like buying milk and you're like way past the expiration date. 
Are you still supposed to drink it? No, you'll get sick. Uh, Yeah, the Constitution is the foundation of our society here in this particular country. But yet we tend not to update it all that much. So we're living in a modern society with this freaking computer shit going on. And that nothing like that is in the Constitution. Why would that be? Because it wasn't invented or conceived yet. It's not in the Ten Commandments. It's not in those ten things. Handed down personally from God um, in, a, in a mountain or on top of it. Uh, many children, the only mountains they ever see are the ones at Disney World. Uh, so it's kind of odd. Uh, yeah, that's uh, the Ten Commandments. Are, are they're, they're pretty decent. They didn't refer to anything other than just morals. And morals, they can stand. Yeah, they can stand. Constitution, ain't got no morals in it whatsoever. Really, they don't. And again, as I've said on so many other shows, I believe that in the Constitution or in some Bill of Rights, whatever the fuck it is, it says all men are created equal, and apparently Trump never read that clause. All right. Um, We're talking condoms today. And uh, some people talk condoms every day. I really don't know. But before we do speak to our guest about the wonderful world of condoms, ooh, sounds like a Disney special, doesn't it? Before we do that, uh, we've got uh, this. Gentlemen, you know that when you decide to get engaged, you'll be making one of the most important investments of your life. Think about it. From the moment you get down on bended knee and present the ring... How much you actually love someone will be judged solely on the size of the stone you buy. And not just by the one you love, but by literally everyone she knows. And strangers. At Schlickashek the Jewelers, we know that when you're about to cough up what amounts to a few months' rent to obtain the exclusive naming rights to a vagina, you want to be able to be sure that you've made the best choice. So if you've decided it's time to staple gun your man tackle to a single hitching post and to never be able to experience the simple joy of a meaningless hookup without handing over half your stuff, come to Schlickashek the Jewelers and see our amazing line of certified high quality shallow female ego strokers. Take it from me, Herbert Schlickashek I'm not just your local jeweler, I've been married six and a half times. Vegas marriages, boys. Very easy to annul when the shrew goes south on you. And she will. Ben Anzarino is joining us now. He's the CEO and owner of a very, very interesting company, Condomania. Yes, that's what I said. And uh, he joins us now. How you doing, Ben? I'm doing great, Ron. How are you? Uh, great. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, when they told me that you were available for interviews, I said I must talk to Ben. This is <laughs> this has got to happen. Uh, this is a man. It's a great idea uh, for for a company. I'll, I'll tell you. When I was a kid, I remember being so embarrassed walking into a pharmacy, even being around the condom display, uh, or or asking anybody where it was. It was embarrassing. Uh, you've just taken the embarrassment totally out of it. Well, I, I wish it wasn't embarrassing. Uh, Condomania has been around since 1991. Really? So, uh, it's America's first condom shop, uh, wow. originally opening in New York City as a brick and mortar store. Wow! Um, and we are online today. Uh, you know, shipping out everywhere. And yeah, I mean, people come to us because exactly what you said. They're they might be embarrassed uh, to go into a store. Uh-huh. I wish they weren't. Uh, they might be embarrassed, but we also have like the the selection and sizes and different oh, types yeah. that people prefer. No, when uh, when I got older, I realized it was the opposite. Uh, if someone in the store hears you looking for condoms, they say, "Whoa, this guy's viable." Whoa, look at him. I like that. <laughs> so it's, for me, it's the opposite. Um, I did not know. I've been around for a while there, Ben, but I did not know that they came in all different sizes and all different types. I thought it was just maybe two or three variations on the on the materials and shapes, but I didn't know it was that involved. Well, everybody's a different size, right? And that's one of the problems, especially as young people are 
starting out their sex lives is yeah. the it's something that a lot of people don't know about, right? It's that there are several different sizes. You know, we, we call them kind of the, uh, we, we break them up into three or four sizes. Mm-hmm. The snugger, snugger fit, which is more on the, the smaller size. We yep. have our standard size. And then we kind of go into our larges and, and extra larges. But, yeah. you know, human beings, everybody's got a different anatomy, right? And I so, um, you know, you want to make sure. And so the, that's part of what we're releasing right now is mm-hmm. uh, what we're calling our state of the unit, which is our penis sizes by state chart. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and we're putting it together based on sales data from all over the country. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we broke it up by what state by is the most of what size and uh you know <laughs> that that and so we took sales data from the past 10 years right. and we're putting it together for that uh okay. but yeah a lot of people like you said uh, are not wearing the proper size we think that about 80 percent or more of uh, gentlemen are not wearing the right size condom I, I, which is unfortunate I, 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 yeah um how well, how do i put this question um how do you know? Doesn't the size vary depending on uh, stimulation? I mean, or, or, or we we have a capacity, and that's pretty much it. Well, we have a, a length, and we have a girth. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, so, and, how and, do you know? Yeah, but how do you know what what you're going to achieve? How do you know? How do you know what size you need? Yes, in other words. Oh. You know, like maybe sometimes, depending on the person, it can be a smaller size than, uh, whoa, uh, you really given me uh, the, the large size here. I mean, is, <laughs> is, there, is that, does that come into play or is it pretty much just generally where you are? It's, it's generally where you are. So if, if you're, uh, if you're about 5.1 inches or less, uh, you're going into the snugger fit, I see. uh, uh, category, oh, okay. anything above that, you're going to standard size, okay. um, up until, uh, oh, up until about the seven and a half inch length and above yeah, and you're going into well. the large size. And a lot of it depends on, on kind of your, your girth too. Gotcha. Um, okay. and so it's, uh, you know, a lot of it goes back to the question about why. Like, what does it mean, though? Yeah. <laughs> right? Like to have a, a well, you want it. You want the snuggest. Condom. You want the snuggest fit possible without being uncomfortable, right? Yeah, I mean, it goes back to just being staying harder for longer, mm-hmm. uh, lasting longer, and just increasing your sensation. Sure. So maybe you do want snugger fit, but also you kind of maybe don't even want to know it's there sometimes, That's but it. you do want, you do want to know it's there that it's, it's protecting right, you, right. but you also you don't want to feel know, it. You don't want to feel you that it's there. Don't. Right? Yeah, right. And so like, you know, we, we're putting together, um, there's a couple guidelines, right. That you can think of, mm-hmm. it, um, to f- make sure that you have the right fit. Is it too short? You know, uh-huh. you want the condom to fully cover your entire shaft all the way from the, the uh-huh. top to the bottom. Okay. Is it too long? Uh, if the average penis size is five and a half inches, mm-hmm. but the average condom size is seven and a half inches, then we might have a problem. Uh, you want the condom to unroll all the way down to the bottom, mm-hmm. basically. Um, and then is it too tight or, or, or is it too loose? Yeah. And so, yeah, we, we do have our size charts on Condomania that users can go and they can look at and, and see what might be best for them. But ultimately, I just recommend trying out a whole lot yeah uh, um, yeah uh, what do they call it a flight <laughs> oh, no, that's, that's yeah <laughs> we, we do have sampler packs there for you sure there where you, you can it. try out their different sizes but i mean everybody's just completely different and so you might fall into one category on our size chart but mm-hmm. might be more comfortable trying out uh, using a different mm-hmm. condom ben so. you, you you've been marketing this and and, and uh, offering this for quite a period of time obviously has a technology in the actual material that's that's used uh has that changed over the years? Is it is it pretty much just that same latex thing, or or are there all other variations now? Well, latex has been around yeah, for for about a hundred years yeah. now, uh, since the twenties, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the newest uh, material that has come out has come out in the beginning of the the uh, the twenty first century in the mm-hmm. early two thousands, called polyisoprene, mm-hmm. and um, that's very thin material it, it transfers heat very well and and it's very popular for uh folks that might have a latex allergy I see. and so along you know you talk about people going into the pharmacy or being uh you know embarrassed about it what whatnot yeah. um a lot of the people come to us because they also have an allergy so oh. we sell a, a lot of the condoms that we sell oh. are uh of the non-latex variety and 
this polyisoprene is a new technology. Uh, th there are some other ones as well, some some other like synthetic polyurethanes or, or natural lamb skins as well. But mm. the newest one to answer your question is yeah. this polyisoprene material. Are they all e equally as reliable? Yeah, uh, they're well. They're all about ninety-eight plus percent reliable. Oh, um, a lot of the condom breakage that you might hear about is not necessarily uh, due to the condom or how it's manufactured. Mm -hmm. A lot of it might is uh, could be considered user error, yep. right? Did yep. you put it on properly? Yep. Um, one of we talk up to a lot of young people, right, about just condom the importance of condom usage. But one of the things that young people are also not aware of is uh, the importance of lubricant. Uh, and using a water-based lubricant with your condoms can help mm. prevent breakage uh, using it. And uh, a lot of people are not aware that you should be using it both on the inside and the outside of your condom to help uh -huh. prevent that breakage. And so, you know, are, are they reliable? Absolutely. Uh, just as reliable as any other condoms. But right. you have to you have to make sure that uh, that you're using it properly and with okay. proper lubricant as well. So, so when it says on the package, a lubricated condom, it, that's that's not enough. It's You still have to add lubricant is that what you're saying i i would always recommend gotcha. adding ex additional lubricant couldn't yeah hurt. couldn't hurt actually it kind of makes it a bit more enjoyable actually um, it, it does it does, it does. <laughs> I, I would say and, you know and a water-based lubricant we, we saw a couple different types of lubricant we have mm -hmm. a silicone-based lubricant and an oil base but for condoms mm -hmm. uh you want a water-based lubricant you don't mm -hmm. really want to be mixing silicone with the, right. the latex ew, condoms ew. all right uh you had uh, mentioned earlier that uh, various states have various buying trends and such by the shape of the state itself. I would assume Florida would be the biggest consumer, but probably not. <laughs> uh, can, can you divulge which state uh, consumes the most condoms per capita? Uh, California ah, uh, is the makes biggest. Sense. Makes sense. From, makes sense. from what we can tell from our sales mm -hmm. data, uh, California is the biggest user of condoms. We want everybody ah. to use condoms. But per capita, okay. it, it's California. Um, now, that's it. not yeah. size. You know, si Size-wise, uh, leading the... the Leading the race, you're looking at like Maine, Missouri, Arkansas, Washington State. It's Ooh, it's not really um, connected to a single geography. Okay, um, I'm going to but, I'm going to assume Utah would be the least uh, used. Uh, well, in terms of size, uh, well, from what saying. we have, uh, uh, South Dakota is at the bottom of the list. South I Dakota, see. Alaska, New Mexico. Okay, uh, but again. Size doesn't matter so much, no, right? We don't want to discriminate against anybody. And then not going back all. to what we were talking about before, um, you know, a lot of people are not using the proper size. We want people to start using the proper size yeah. uh, condoms. But from what we're tracking, yeah, we're, we're topping the list with, with Maine. Uh, we're bottoming the list with the, the South Dakota. Uh -huh. um, but we do expect, you know, we have this huge human migration going on, right? Yeah. Where a lot of people are moving. Huh. I live in Austin, Texas. Right, and, so, and so you can't We tell. have yeah. a lot of people from California and different yeah. states coming yeah. here. So we have this huge dick migration going on in the country. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, we expect these numbers to change uh, uh, in the next couple years. Yes. Um, okay. Florida is uh, gaining a lot of population sure. as well. So, sure. so, That'll also change the numbers, so it, it's yet to be seen, you know, if the big dicks are staying or going or, or what's going on with them. Oh, they're on the move. They're on the move. They're, they're on, on. Everybody's on the move. On the move. That's right. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, fascinating. I, I assume that the online business is, is the way to go in this particular category. I know you did the brick and mortar, but uh, online has got to be the most useful uh, method of, of transacting here. You know, we're, we're able to keep our costs low, mm -hmm. uh, which people love. We're able to ship discreetly, which is extraordinarily important, the discreetness uh, in this business. And then we're able to offer a variety. Yeah. Um, so a, a variety of safe sex products. So yeah. everything from condoms and lubricants to uh, self-pleasure devices for yeah. both men and women. So, um yeah, we, we've got we've got everything to keep you safe and fun in the bedroom for sure. Yeah, I know women have a lot of different lubricant things that that uh, stimulate and all that, but uh, men, I've not heard that as frequently of of the the actual uh, supplements that, that can cause tingles and things like that. Usually on the women's side, am I wrong? Well, in terms of condoms, there are. Are you talking about lubricants or condoms? Uh, lubricants. Lubricants. Well, 
what tingles uh there are definitely tingling sensations for men yeah. uh with lubricants there's also delay uh lubricants for men oh. to help hold off just a little bit oh. um well, but again it, it also kind of depends on on um, the lubricant depends on what you're using it for are you using it with a condom are you using it mm-hmm. with a, a toy again sometimes you don't want to you don't want to cross over. You don't want to use a silicone based lubricant with mm-hmm. latex condoms. You also don't want to use silicone mm-hmm. lubricants on silicone toys. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the other thing you touched upon, which is, uh, which caught my attention is, is just the, uh, you know, when we think of toys, we also think of, we think a lot about the toys for women and, and not necessarily the self pleasure devices exactly. and toys for, for men, exactly. um, which, which is, which, which is a shame. And I'd love to change that. We're seeing more and more interest in that over the years, mm-hmm. Um, getting into just masturbation devices for, for men, they, they can range from a couple bucks to mm. a couple hundred bucks, mm. but you don't you really don't need to spend a couple hundred bucks to, to get an amazing, uh, self pleasure device for, sure. for men. And, and, um, yeah, it, that, that's also probably a stigma. We talk about the stigma with starting out with condoms and lubricants and what size and buying them in stores, but there's also a stigma in life. Everybody masturbates. So you have to, right. Right, you have to cleanse you your colon. You. Right. And, you and so, uh, and so why not do it with them? <laughs> why, why not do it with an amazing, uh, toy and, and yeah, device? We're not talking prostitution here or anything. I mean, yeah. Hey, uh, let me ask you this, uh, perhaps a sensitive question in, in a way. Uh, I was not aware that this, uh, was available to me online or in different sizes and all these varieties plus the, the, the supplemental offerings that you have. Why was I not aware is, are, are you, allowed to market like another business would or, or, or are there are there restrictions on on that well uh in terms of restrictions there are some restrictions so if we are ad- so you won't see advertisements for adult products on facebook right um you won't see you, we we do advertise on google but mm-hmm. they are slightly restricted mm-hmm. um and so you'll see less and less there unless you're really seeking it out yeah um, and so, yeah, it, it is slightly restricted. And unfortunately, we, we yeah. do get put into a box w- mm-hmm. with like, you know, we're trying to sell safe sex products. And, and that's kind of uh, only fans went through this recently, right? Where, mm-hmm. where they're, they're saying they're trying to cut up, cut them off all the payment processors. And they're like, no, we're, we're doing something that's 100 percent legal. And well, so are legal, but but I mean, necessary in a part of everyday life. It's it's. Uh... Yeah, I I don't know. That, those, are, I, those are leftover stigmas, unfortunately. Absolutely, and so we do get put into this box with you know uh, pornography. Well, yeah. por- not, not 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 that that's wrong with pornography, no. but also the worst sex. kinds of pornography no. and, sex. and just sex, sex. And, yeah. and and smut and yeah. uh, you know it doesn't have to. No. We're doing something right for the world. Correct. <laughs> we're yeah, spreading I pleasure know. And, and safe sex. And, absolutely. Um, you know, so it's not just. Mm. The advertising that is difficult in this industry, it's also kind of our, our payment processing fees are higher because, uh, you know, they see it as a higher risk. And so there, there's other variables here that, uh, that make it a little bit more difficult than your more conventional business. Yeah, I would think so. Yet, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you're s- spreading the word, so to speak. Uh, it's, it's good to know. Uh, okay, now how do we take advantage of, of this? Where do we go? Condomania.com. So just so. condomania.com and, and that's it's so simple so when, when you come to our homepage, you'll see uh three big buttons um you'll see the snugger fit condoms standard size condoms and, and large size condoms mm-hmm. and you can explore all those we also have uh size charts on every condom page if you're searching for condoms we list the sizes of each condom so that you can uh, pick out what's right for you mm-hmm. uh, and we also have a lot of resources too that you could read through but again um my biggest suggestion is just try a couple different sizes. And, yeah. and if you think that you're on the fence between one or the other, mm-hmm. um, you know, try them out. Uh, talking about different types of condoms also, uh, you know, while there's different sizes of condoms, the different types like non latex condoms are uh, so, some people would say they, they might run, they might feel like they run a little bit smaller. It's like mm-hmm. if you're buying a Nike shoe, it mm-hmm. might feel like it's running smaller right. um, because they have a little bit less uh, of that stretch going on. Mm-hmm. And so there's a difference uh, between the sizes that we list and also between the, the materials of them too. So I would say Wonderful. try out and, and see what works for you. So you can be safe and happy at the same time. Absolutely. And pleasure yourself and your partner at the same time, Sounds for sure. Great. 
Ben, a uh, pleasure uh, speaking to you. You've kind of opened our eyes there on, on what's going on. It's Condomania. Uh, go there. and uh, Thank you so much for having uh, me on. Thank you. Hey, it's been a pleasure. You take care, Ben. Well, that'll do it for me today. You have been wonderful as usual. I'll be back again tomorrow with a brand new show. Thank you to my guest. Until tomorrow, I wish you peace. Peace.